Hello, good people of the internet. Who is LaShawn E. Price and what I do, what I do? Um, it's been a crazy week, to say the least. Uh, shoot, I've been a crazy life, to tell you the truth. But who am I? I am first and foremost a mother. Um, on August 23rd, I became, the mo I became a mother. And um, I have given birth to three beautiful children who I am here to protect and provide for. Now, provide has many, many, you know, definitions. And so if that's financially, emotionally, educationally, I'm here to do what I have to do and what I need to do to take care of my children. Um, now, that has led me to some not so great decisions in life and on a crazy kind of journey. But most decisions in my life I make with my children in mind because I stop being a single, a singular person the day that I gave birth to my daughter. Um, I was no longer, actually the day that I, I would start carrying my daughter, that I knew she was in there. I, I, I was no longer an I, I was a we. And that's just how it is. You know, um, I love my kids more than anything in this world. My kids are why I do what I do. They are who I do it for. They are my reason why. And there are times when people want to test that. That's not good because I've gone through a lot and I can take a lot on myself. You know, you could treat me. Well, you could you used to be able to treat me whatever way. And I bounce back from that and I'll still bounce back from, from it, whatever comes my way. But when it starts affecting my children or if it's if I see that it's going to affect my children. nah, it's done. It's dead. It can't do it. You know, you must be removed. Your influence must be removed from our lives. I put up with a lot. And um, I've sacrificed a lot for my kids. And I'm not saying that to be some holier than thou, anything. You know, that is what it is. That's just how it is. You know, as I say, I'm a mother first. And um, even relationships with their fathers. I've dealt with a lot from them. And again, I'm very good at going ghost. I'm very good at disappearing. You know, I'm very good at not having to talk to you ever again in life. But for the sake of my children. But cross that line. I'll go ahead and draw it for you. Don't worry. I just... As I say, I've been tried this week. I've been pushed. I got folks coming after. I got kids coming after my son and their mothers coming after me because they children can't control themselves. And I'll come at you civil. I know how to be civil. I know how to be cordial. I know how to conduct myself properly. I know how to come to you adult to adult. But if you come to me childish, I'll only let that fl fly for, you know, just so long. You know, so that was handled on Monday. My neighbor found that out the hard way. But, um, I don't know. I had a whole lot more to say because <laughs> I got a text message this morning basically slamming my character as a mother. That's how I see it. And, uh, that's not cool with me at all. I've taken, as I say, I've, I've done a lot. I've taken a lot um, for what the last 20 years, you know, well, not 18 of those 20. I've been trying to find a move from place to place, trying to find someone who can help me raise my child, you know, and later on, add on children, you know. So first my daughter and then now my boys and um, Looking for love, what do they say? Looking for love in all the wrong places, you know, and not valuing myself and not knowing myself. I jumped into some relationships and things went the way they went. 
you know, um, the first relationship that was, you know, I was naive. I was young, was not prepared. Neither one of us were, but things happened the way they did. And as I say, I've been trying to find somebody to help me raise these kids, but I learned just a couple years ago that that person is me. That falls on me. That's my responsibility. You know, um, it shouldn't be that way, but it is what it is. And I accept that. It took a long time for me to accept that I am all I got when it comes to my children. Now, there are people out there who do help and, um, and I appreciate them, you know, for what they do especially when it comes to my daughter and her college and things like that and support that she needs, um, you know, when she needs a place to stay and things like that and rides and stuff. I appreciate that, you know. It's just that on a day-to-day basis, it's me. And as I say, those relationships, I got into one relationship, the last one, and stayed off and on it was off and on relationship for five years it was an abusive relationship that was my domestic violence relationship and out of that came my son my son you know so that is the only reason that I deal with my abuser I would not call him I would not talk to him I would not see him in life if I had a choice if it wasn't for my son so until my son is able to handle business on his own, I have to speak with this person. I have to, uh, you know, be civil and cordial enough to have this person in my life. But it's only for my son. Only conversations about my son that retain to him and around him. The thing is, I'll protect my child to the fullest. And I will not put him in harm's way. I will not put him, I will not send him anywhere that I think that he may be mistreated or neglected or anything like that. And yeah, I can handle this off Facebook. I can handle this off live. You know, I could. But again, I do what I do for my kids. That also goes into, you know, I get slammed because I don't work. And it's difficult because I have my 10 year old who has autism and I get tired of people coming for me, tired of people questioning my motherhood, questioning um, my womanhood, questioning my adulthood, you know, just coming at me saying I'm lazy and things like that, you know, or just talking down on me or looking down on me, man, if I had somebody who could watch my son and do it consistently and not mentally harm him or put him in a worse state than he is already in or um, psychologically harm him. I'm not going to put him in any, any situation where it's going to, you know, be detrimental to him, his health or his well-being or his mind, because he can he has limited speech, you know. He can't tell me that someone did this. He can't tell me that someone did that. And it's not his brother's place if I have them together by someone watching them. It's not his brother's place to tell me. It's not an eight-year-old's place to tell me what's going on with his 10-year-old big brother. Now, that's not to say that my eight-year-old does not look out for his big brother. They actually look out for each other in their own special ways. But... It's been a difficult year, difficult school year. Well, it was a difficult school year for my 10 year, my 10 year old. So that's why, again, I do what I do. That's why I look for work from home opportunities. That's why I um, look for an alternative to something that's flexible so that I can take care of my children the best way that I can. You know, um, having a job outside the house, I've done that. I did that with my daughter and it affected our relationship because it's not as it wasn't as great as it could have been because I was working for peanuts and working all these hours and not being able to spend time with her. And she was always with family and things um, babysitting her and I couldn't be with her. I could not during those early years that that affects your child, you know, so me and my daughter, we talk, we talk a lot. And I've already told her, you know, I apologize. 
for the way things went. I did the best that I could, you know, the best that I knew how to do. And um, I was working with what I what I was given. I was working with what I thought was the way to go. You know, you're told to go get a job. You're told that's the way to take care of your family. You got to go out here in this world and stay with these companies and do what they want to do and stay as long as they want you to stay and get paid whatever they want you to get paid. And even if that's not enough to take care of yourself and your family, then go out and get you a second job. You know, but that whole time somebody else is raising your child. I can't do it. I did it. I can't do it anymore. You know, my babies have me. That's it. On a consistent basis. They have me. Everybody else has their own lives that they can go live. You know, they are my life. That's just how it is. So that's why I continue to do what I can and do what I do and work and, and do my best to learn how to be one of these top earners in these work from home companies. And then this one that I found, which is a pretty good one that I believe I can do that with. And I don't have to make money just with the company. They teach me how to make money beyond the company. That's what you need to do. If you ever get in this work from home industry, you need to get with a company that teaches you a skill. And these skills that I'm learning right now, I could pass down to my children. Gives them the option to go into the workforce or it gives them the option to build a business and work for themselves and have some kind of freedom. That's what I want for my children. I want them to have options, you know, want them to be able to, to do more with their life more than I've been able to. But, you know, that's a little bit about me. That's a little bit about my story. You know, I didn't tell all my story, all my journey and all the hardships. You know, I mean, the cliff notes is my life pretty much started as an adult with my daughter and trying to find someone to help me raise her uh, and, and you know, look after her. And then um, it continued with me moving from place to place, just trying to find the best place for us. Gotten a one relation. Well, it wasn't even a relationship. It was a flame. Over a summer. That's how I got my son, my second son, you know. And then the third one got into a relationship too quick. Things happened. And then it became abusive. And I had to cut that off. It took a long time. And folks would be like, why'd you stay? Why'd you keep letting me come back? You should just, you know, dead at that from, from jump. Which I tried to do that first that first time. Because I was strong. And then the hormones, I'm going to blame it on the hormones. The hormones kicked in. I'm about to have another child. Um, I need that child. I'm thinking I need that child's father in, in his life because that's what society tells you is you need a man to complete a family. And it's been hard for me to learn that the family is who you are with and who, and, and who you're left with and who you deal with, you know. And um, so I got out of that. I left. I basically left the state. Did not go back. I've been back a handful of times because I've got family there. But um, I just can't do it. Got to protect myself and got to protect my children. Got to protect myself mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, went through two years of hard depression after I left. And then getting out of that depression, I went into, um, after again trying to get help from a, from, from a friend and things not working out, I went into a shelter. So me and my boys lived in a shelter for nine months because that's what I had to do to be able to get on my feet and to, I'm still not on my feet, but I'm not in the shelter anymore. Now I'm, I'm now, you know, in my own place and doing the best that I can to take care of my kids, you know? Um, but those nine months in that shelter, it brought me into contact with a lot of programs that can help me and my children and a year from 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 right now like last year this time I wasn't in a very good space I had just gotten into my own place just got out of shelter and was was working with these programs and going into therapy and doing um getting my children's life back on track getting them into school and their medical stuff taken care of and um just graduated out of this program that was to help me 
learn the resources in the community and resources to help myself and my children. And um, they say that I've, I've grown and that my children have grown and that they've seen the progress and that um, where our session is complete for the, you know, it's been, a, it was a year. And I can always go back. I can always call on those folks for help. Um, I, I have extra resources now, you know, with, with, with them in my life and also have gotten out into the community. And now we have programs that we go to as a family. And um, as I say, there's just things that I do so that my kids can have the best that they can for me. You know, I, I as a mother, some mothers, they don't take care of themselves. You know, they don't, um, they always try to take care of everybody else and themselves last. That's a hard thing for me to understand that I must take care of me and get myself right so that I could be there for my children, you know, so that I could do the best for them. And because if I'm not right, how are they right? You know? So again, that's why I do what I do. That's who I am. You know, I'm a mother first and everything else that I do. All the decisions I make are to complement me being that, whether it be a job, whether it be an entrepreneur, whether it be a student, whatever else, whether it be a girlfriend or or whatever, you know, because, again, I've sacrificed that. Been chill off that for four years, you know, because I'm like, I need to take care of me and I got to take care of these little boys that are raising in my house. I have to emotionally be there for my daughter and I can't do that. By worrying about other outside forces, you know, or other people's attitudes or whatever. I got to, I cut that off. You know, I may deal with that again soon because I'm stronger now. I'm stronger than I was. I can handle more now. But my kids come first. That's just how it is. And if I'm living below my means, I'm not living, um... I guess you say living below my potential, maybe, you know, it's where I got to live right now until I can find something or whatever it is that's going to get us out of our situation and boost us to where we're supposed to be or where we need to go next. You know, um, for those who are watching the replay, I appreciate it. For those who are watching now, we have clicked in, you know, Tiffany Marcus, thank y'all for listening. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that right now. I'm guessing I've been on here for a while, but, uh, I'll be doing more live audios about more or less my business or my family. Um, so tune in. Thanks again. And y'all have a good one.